Hello. Welcome back to YouTube. This video section is all about how to configure voice evacuation frames VX3004F, VX3008F, VX3016F, manufactured by Toa. I have already make a part 1 for the same video. Before you continue this video go through with that link available in description or click on i button. Without any ado let's start the video. To continue video Let's go to VX3000 settings software. In the last section we have done, how to add amplifier, zone configuration, and, many more. Now let's check our configuration, which was done in last video. To do that, click on down arrow, behind unit. Here we can see our inputs, and, outputs. We have 4 analog inputs, and, 8 output zones which we have changed names like main hall, room 1, etc. Let's add RM, remote microphone. To do that, click on add button, located at RM configuration. A new pop-up window will open. Let's configure RM. Here we have two types of RM. First is, RM200SF. As you can see on my screen, this is physically appearance of RM200SF. It's having total three number of keys, and, a microphone available. We can configure this keys, as per our usage, we'll see that later in this video. Second is, RM300X. As you can see on my screen, this is physically appearance of RM300X. It's having total 15 number of keys, and, a microphone. I have this type too, so I will select second type. Which type you have, select that unit. Then, extension settings. If you have any extensions for RM, select number of extension would you like to add from drop down list. Maximum we can add 7 number of extensions for 1 RM. Normally extensions are used for to add more number of options for end users. It will depend on the project you working for. I don't have any extensions, so I will keep it as 0. Then go for setting the connection. We have to select the evacuation unit, where we have connected RM. If we have more than one evacuation units, then we can get list from drop down. As you can see I'm getting only one evacuation unit. Because I have connected only one evacuation unit. Then, select the port. Basically we have two ports for remote microphone. RS link A, and, RS link B. We have to select the port where we have connected to RM and type the address of unit normally for link A type address as 1 and for link B type address as 2 important notice every time we are connecting RM to unit we need to use only STP cable patch cord STP cable is twisted pair cable with additional shielding to reduce crosstalk and other forms of electromagnetic interference EMI in case, if you use normal UTP cable, it will not work. Then, click on OK. As you can see on screen, RM is added in the unit, as input. To change name, and, other settings of RM, dual click on it. A new pop-up window will open. Here we can change, name of unit as per our convenience. Then, right side we have 15 keys. Emergency key. System 1 to system 3, talk key, and key 1, to key 10. We can change all key names, as per its functionality. We will see ahead, how to define each key and its functionality. Then, go to talk. Then, go to talk key settings. Change, ptt slash lock setting, as lock to PTT, and keep other settings as default. Then, go to chime settings. Change general mic start, no chime, to chime 1. And, change general mic end, no chime, to chime 1. Then, go to an auxiliary port, AUX, settings. Keep face settings as default. Then, click on OK. Now let's go to network settings. We can change here IP credentials for all the network ports, connected to evacuation frame. Actually face network ports, used to integrate PA system, 
with other systems like BMS, fire alarm system, etc. We will see that in upcoming events. Let's go to amplifier configuration settings. Here we can see our amplifiers, which are connected in evacuation frame. We need to make balance for their output signal. To do that, adjust both amplifiers output signal, as I'm doing here. With this signal adjustment we can reduce conflict noise. If you not done this adjustment, you will hear noise, when you try to speak in microphone. Now let's go to standby amplifier settings. Here we have two columns. One is, additional amplifiers. Amplifiers added in evacuation frame, except standby amplifier, it will show in this column. Second column is, standby amplifier connection to. If any standby amplifier added in evacuation frame, it will show in this column. If we'd like to make any additional amplifier as standby, click on that particular amplifier. And, click on add button, located in between two boxes. Same if we need to remove any amplifier from standby list. Select particular amplifier. And, click on delete button, located in between two boxes. Let's move to other parameter settings. That is, surveillance settings. Here we have to click on check boxes, for amplifier, RM, and, speakers. If you like to use other options like, control inputs, DC power, etc., then select that boxes, accordingly. Next go to, internal EV settings. Sound source files can be registered into the evacuation frames, like VX3000F, VX3008F, VX3016F, through EV settings. To do that, click on load. A new pop-up window will open, select the file, and, click on open. It will upload to unit. Up to 1024 sound source files can be registered per system. To use the sound source files for broadcasts, set them as EV message. I have uploaded a file. For fire alarm integration. First listen this audio. Then we go ahead, and, set them as EV messages. May I have your attention please? May I have your attention please? A fire emergency has been reported in the building. Please leave the building immediately by the nearest emergency exit. Do not use the elevators. والامتناع عن استخدام المصاعد أكرر يمنع استخدام المصاعد Let's create EV messages To do that, go to EV message settings Then Select EV message number as one Then EV message name If you like to change name, type as per your requirement I will keep same Then, go to Control setting Change type not used to, alert, or, evacuate, or, restoration, or, general, or, BGM, depend on the functionality. I will use this message for fire alarm integration, so I will select as evacuate. A new window will add, as EV message settings. Select the audio source from drop down, for all eight numbers. If you like to add more EV message, then change EV message number and repeat the same process as I'm doing. I will create 8 EV messages. Let me do it fast. Then we go ahead. You can copy and paste for all messages to make process faster. Then go to chime setting. Change chime name as per your requirement. I will keep same name. Then, go to sound source, and, select audio file. Select till chime 8. Then go to, priority settings. 
Here we can change priority for inputs and internal messages for broadcasting. Then, go to Pattern Settings. Here we can create patterns for broadcasting as per output zones. Create pattern number one. We have eight output zones. We can make pattern as per our requirement. I will select all zone and create patterns. It's only sample. You can do as per your requirement. Then go to Base Pattern. This one no need to change. Then go to General Broadcast. Here we can create broadcast sequence as per requirement. Change name of sequence. Then select audio input source. EV message, audio input, or AUX. Earlier we created EV messages, so I will select same. Then select chime. Citrate, and, end. Then select output as individual zones, or, patterns. I will select pattern. Then, select pattern number from drop down list. Let me create more sequences fast. Then go to Control Output. Here we can create patterns for Control Output terminals, same like we make for zones. Let me make it fast. Then go to Emergency sequence. Here we have to create sequence for emergency in case a fire alarm triggered what message we need to broadcast. Select messages and duration. Duration should be select as endless because until we receive signals from fire alarm panel, the same message should be broadcast. Let me select more sequences faster. Then go to Emergency Broadcast. Here we have to create pattern for Emergency Broadcast. Create name of pattern. Select sequence number which was created earlier. Then select output for zones and control output either individual or pattern. Let me create more patterns fast. Create as per your requirement. Then go to Emergency Broadcast Status Interlocking. Make the settings for this. This option to make system normal condition once alarm closed. If you not select this feature, every time get fire alarm signal, we need to restart system for bringing unit to normal mode. To make settings, go to Change Function None. To emergency broadcast interlocking. Then, select any control output pattern. I will select first one. Then go to Failure settings. I'm not making any changes here. This option to get failure status and if in case any failure occurred, what should be its alternatives. Then go to Event settings. Here we have to make control input terminal settings. Select function as emergency broadcast pattern start slash stop.
then select signal type, NO, or, NC, depend on the signal you're receiving from fire alarm panel. Then, contents 1, as emergency pattern 1, contents 2, as emergency restoration, and, contents 3, as no restoration message. Select at least for 5 control input terminals. So we can give fire signal at any terminal. Then go to RM. Here we have to configure RM keys, and, its functionality. I hope this video is going too longer. I will end this video section at this point. In the next part, we will see how to add RM extension, and, how to configure RM keys etc. You will find part 3 link in description. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, and, subscribe to my channel.